And you are listening to LBC. You may also be watching it. I think we've turned on the cameras at lbc.co.uk. If you want to head over there, you'll see a, uh, well, very welcome but unexpected guest in the studio this morning. I don't know if you were listening to Nigel Farage's phone-in with Nick Ferrari last week. If you were, you'll have heard this. And I just wondered how it feels to be keep, well, keep getting called a racist. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this is the political class clubbing together, using their mates in the media, and doing anything they can to stop the UKIP charge. And because we've got a few idiots in our party, as by the way does every other party, you know, somebody in some part of England says something stupid or offensive on Twitter at midnight, um, and this is held up as being representative of the view of the party. Nigel Farage is with me now. Shall we? Let's start with today's Good idiots, morning. shall we? And then and then move on to what you mean by the political class and their yeah. friends in the media. Uh, we got John Lyndon Sullivan, I think, overnight. Uh, it's emerged. He tweeted, "I rather he's a cancer of yours in Gloucestershire. I rather often wonder if we shot one pufter whether the next 99 would decide on balance that they weren't after all. We might then conclude that it's not a matter of genetics, but rather more a matter of education. Uh, admittedly, of fairly small fry in the UKIP machine, uh, not a description you could apply to your small business spokesman who, um, it turned out this morning, has employed seven illegal immigrants well, in the last year. Well, they're two different things, aren't they? I mean, firstly... Well, I don't know. Are they firstly, both idiots? Firstly, or? firstly, people yes. saying silly things. Uh, yeah, of course, we've had more of it than we would like. Uh, but, hey, hang on a second. What's going on in the other parties? I mean, we just got the I'll, news... I'll, I'll ask them yeah. when they're here, yeah. Nigel, we, but I'm well, talking that, about your party today. But that's the point. Today. Nobody ever does ask them, and that's the point I'm making, is I'm perfectly happy... For us to have a debate about Good. our idiots and our people who are offensive. So what happens and to John you... Lyndon Sullivan then for that tweet? Uh, he's not a councillor, is he? He's a council candidate. I think he's already in the council. Is he? I don't know. I haven't heard of his name. Well, he's but, got but you on the party's name on his ballot name. paper. I haven't heard of... Well, there's a big difference between being on the ballot paper and being an elected councillor. You know, one comes after the other. He, he is an we elected... Have had a, we have he had... He is an elected councillor. Is he? Fine. I, I didn't know that. We have had people... So what happens to him now? Uh, we, he, he will face a disciplinary charge of whether he's brought the party into district. That was on the 17th of February. Uh, was it? I don't know. OK. What about know. the small business spokesman who employs seven illegal immigrants? Well, that, I think be a little bit careful on that story. You know, he founded a business, which he's no longer a director of. His sons run it. They have, they have got a big row going on. He resigned, the, the, to be clear, as a director of the company three days after the immigration yeah, raid. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. He's resigned as a director. After he's the not, immigration he's raid. He's not running, yeah. But he wasn't responsible for the, for the day-to-day -day running of it. However, I've spoken to him this morning. He says they, they made checks and they are in dispute with the immigration authorities and they've gone to appeal. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But that doesn't make him an idiot, you know. What does it make him? We, well, well, we don't know. You know, let's find out what happens here. Maybe somebody in his business has made a mistake. I do not believe for a moment he would have done that. Seven, knowing, seven mistakes. I do not believe for a moment he would have done that knowing that he was running as a candidate for us in the European elections. My argument, James, is this. Wherever we have found people who have had extreme, racist, unpleasant views, we've unceremoniously got rid of them. Furthermore, I've tried to protect the party by making absolutely clear that anybody that had previously been a member of the BNP or organisations like that cannot even join as a member. And to hold up the views of a handful of people as being representative of UKIP, frankly, isn't the truth. Well, OK, what about your associations with, with the BNP? If we go back to 1997 when you, you had lunch with... Um, a chap called Devin, who, as you know, is responsible for writing a, an astonishing... I mean, his expose of Jews in the media was called Mindbenders. You, you, you were photographed with him. It was reported at the time that you're a man who often used words such as nignog and the N-word that Jeremy Clarkson recently got into trouble for in the pub after committee meetings. And a month after that lunch, Devin wrote an article for the far-right journal Spearhead suggesting that the BNP and UKIP get into bed together. How, how does something like that happen? Well, because M Mr Devin was brought into the centre of UKIP by the chap at the time who was the leader um, and turned out to be something very different. And I've never seen him since that day. Well, no, the lunch you had with him day. was after he was expert. Yeah, I wanted to find out why. We'll yeah. Find out why what? Why somebody like him, who had been held up to me as a great academic, he was going to make a very big difference. But you'd seen uh, with, what he'd written. With a book. <coughs> the Grand me. Plan, The Origins of Non-White Immigration. I wanted to find out what on earth had made somebody change their point of view. Nothing more than that. I haven't spoken to him since. As for the allegations, you know, as to what I said in a pub after a committee meetings, you will not find a single other member of that committee who makes that allegation. Alan Sked has, the, yeah, founder, I know he has nobody, the founder of Yes, UK. I know. Well, well you, you just know, said I wouldn't find anyone else. The no, founder no, of no, your party has made the, the same allegation. He was the person that made the allegation. Nobody else has made the allegation. Mr Deven didn't make the allegation. Dr Sked made the allegation. So, and, you know, in politics, you know, all sorts of disappointments happen to people and they throw mud. 
Yeah, of course. Um, you know, so what about, about the, what about the mud that's been thrown about the uh, uh, far-right parties with which you sit in Europe? The Danish People's Party, the True Finns Party, the Dutch SGP, and perhaps most interestingly, the, the, the Lega Nord... Uh, I think you co-chair, do you, that group with, with yes, Francesco I mean, Speroni? <coughs> he described Anders Breivik as someone whose ideas are in defence of Western civilization. No, he didn't, actually. He didn't. One of his members did, and we kicked him out of the group. No, no, you're thinking of Maria Borghesio, who, who went further and said in a radio interview that yeah. Breivik had some excellent ideas. If but, you... but Speroni himself, who is your co-chair of this group, said that Breivik's ideas are in defence of Western civilization. If you were to come with me to Italy or Poland or Slovakia uh, and listen to the political discourse you would realise how incredibly different it is to what we would consider to be acceptable in this country. What I have done in the European Parliament is to try and draw a line and to say we will not sit with people who we believe to be on the extremes. We will sit with people who we believe to have a reasonable balanced point of view. Now, let's be honest, we have had a problem in this group with one or two members of the Northern well, League. Why don't you just leave it? Uh, well, we could leave it, um, and, and in fact we made sure Mr Bergesio left our group. But equally, I mean, you know, the Conservative Party had the bloke who celebrated the SS invasion of the Baltic states, and we have said, and I'm sure you know but this... But why don't you leave it? Why don't you leave we, have said, okay. we have said that we will not sit, you know, with the Front National and, and, and parties like the Austria Freedom Party. We've made that perfectly clear. You know, we are not a party that wants to be linked to the far right. But I promise you, if you look at the associations everybody has to form in the European Parliament, a degree of compromise is needed. Well, th this is what moves us on to the question about the political class that, that you refer to in, in your description of my uh, fears about some of the uh, positions that UKIP seems to yeah. represent. Because all of your defence thus far has been, well, we're no different from any other political party, and yet your whole unique selling point for many of your fans and supporters is that you are different. Well, so, yeah, I think the phrase you used <coughs> was that, that members of the political class and their friends in the media. So let's run through that. You currently write columns for The Express and The Independent every week. Yeah. You've been on Question Time, I think, in recent months, more often than anyone except David Dimbleby. The <laughs> Private Eye has reported that some of your medical bills are paid by one of the owners. Hang on, of the... hang on, I'm not having this. Why not? Hang on. I'm not having libel thrown at me on, you know, live on the radio. Okay, my medical are you bills, taking legal my action medical against bill, Private My Eye? medical bills have not been paid by anybody, all right, other, oh. than, other than partly by myself, more than I could afford, and the rest by an insurer. All okay. right, let's, let's so be clear will you be taking that. legal action against Private Eye? Uh, I may do. I'm at the moment, it might surprise you, you know, I'm busy running an election campaign, so I'll think about that afterwards. OK, too busy to know who's standing uh, on the council in Gloucestershire under your own banner. I lead a political party. Okay, so I, don't run, I don't run the day-to-day -day management of it, uh, but I make sure that we stick to our principles, and we've done that. And, and your look, principles and look, as involve for the, and sitting as for, the, as for the political class... Yes. As for the, look, look, you know, I was in business. I came into politics motivated, above all, by one desire, and that is not for the UK to be part of a political union run by the bureaucrats in Brussels. Now, whether you agree or disagree with that, I have actually given up and sacrificed a huge amount to do that. Have you? Because the last business you were involved in was, I, I think you resigned as company secretary six weeks before it was wound up by the Inland Revenue. Uh, no, that was, I, that was kind of, the last company I was a director of, OK, the last company I ran was my own company, which I ran for nine years and which closed down in good standing. OK, so you weren't company secretary of Farage. I was company Co secretary, yes. Right. But I, but, and you but resigned six I weeks didn't before... Any, it was a non-income-related job. I wasn't, paid, I wasn't paid a penny for being company secretary. Well, presumably, because if they owed 120 grand to the Inland Revenue, there wasn't any money around I to pay it. you anything. I did the job doing somebody in my family a favour. It was unpaid. It wasn't, but you, you, it was you unpaid. You represent it yourself, my Nigel, very effectively as an alternative to, to cronyism yep. and, and city spivery. And you were company secretary of a company that was wound up by the Inland Revenue, owing over £120,000 to the revenue. Wrong. 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 OK, so what, the what, company, what would you like to correct? The company has not been wound up. The company... Why did and you resign? Not, I, Hang on a second. Okay. The company, which is not my company, it's somebody else's company. Company secretary. And I don't own any shares in the company. I was doing a favour for somebody mm. on an unpaid basis. The company, far from winding up, actually said we have a responsibility to make sure our tax bill is paid and it is being paid. Being paid. Actually, it's being paid out of earned income. So the inland revenue is getting twice the money out of it that it would have done to begin with. After the winding up order was issued. <laughs> it, yeah, the company has not just, been Just to be clear, company, I don't have a city the company background. The company has not been wound up, all right? The company still exists, it's active, and it's in the business of paying back the money that it owes. After the winding up order was issued by the Inland Revenue. Have you ever worked in private business? You know, people have successes and people have failures. No, I'm an ordinary you person. Know, I don't understand have, how, well, how these financial million, institutions operate. There are 4.8 million people out there running small business. I bet a lot of them listening to this now. And many of them will have had ups and downs. Many of them will have had cash flow problems. Some of them will have had firms 
that didn't work, but a subsequent one that did. I, myself, in the private sector, ran my own firm for nine years without any difficulty or problems at all. And the point is, I came to do this because I want to engage on the big political debates and issues of the day. And the frustration is this. That, and it, it, I'm not, you know, putting this to you because it doesn't matter where I go. All anyone wants to talk about are the idiots in UKIP. There's never a conversation about the idiots in the Labour Party, the five councillors who've just resigned on racism charges in uh, Middlesbrough. To be honest, I never hear you say anything else when uh, your question well, about your well, own party. And, and, and the problem is, we're not having a debate about the European but Union. But people aren't worried that we're the Labour Party or the Conservative Party is spreading racist propaganda. Well, why people the Conservative don't... Party got a former BNP activist I... standing for them in Lincolnshire? Will you ask the Conservative Of course I will, absolutely. No, you, but you won't, you see, because well, nobody now ever you're does. calling me a liar. Of course, but nobody of course ever I will, does but I've answered your question. The reason why it doesn't possess the same urgency as the UKIP conversation does is A, the question of quantity there is simply not the uh, avalanche of bigotry emerging from other parties oh, yes, that is. emerges from yours oh, yes, there and is. B, perhaps more pertinently for you mm. then there is not a fear abroad afoot there is not a fear in the country the opinion polls do not report significant swathes of the nation who are fearful, possibly wrongly Nigel, that your party <laughs> represents deeply divisive and, I think, I and think. racist ideas. If you'd let me, if you'd let you me finish, let me just move on then go to on. that invitation to go overseas and listen to conversations in in other countries where perhaps mm. far right politics are, are not viewed as askance as they are in this country. Mm. Um, you, you've mentioned your discomfort at listening to foreign languages on a train recently. I, I made the point that I got on a train and went for several stops and there were a lot of people around me and no one spoke English. And I thought, you know, this is... I, I didn't say I, I didn't object to it. I felt slightly uncomfortable. And I think, actually, isn't that the problem? Isn't this, of all the countries in Europe, the most accepting, the most tolerant... You, you said, I don't feel very comfortable in that situation. You no. did say you had a problem. I didn't feel comfortable, no. Yes. Your no. wife is a German speaker. Well, my children are too, yeah. Does that make you feel uncomfortable? No, because no, they can speak English, and the whole point about How having, do you know those people couldn't? Well, maybe they could, but it, I got the distinct feeling that it was, certainly wasn't their language of choice. And if you look at the uh, primary school situation in the East End of London, you know, where you've now got schools where a majority don't speak English, doesn't that say no, to us... No, you've got, a, you've got doesn't schools... Doesn't that say to us? Doesn't that say to us that what we want is a sensible, balanced immigration policy where we want people with skills to come into Britain, but we also want integration in society. Of course we do. And the and schools you refer happening. to, the pupils you refer to, yeah. are registered and recorded as, ha as having English as a second language. They're not yeah. registered and recorded as not being able to speak English. It's That's precisely that sort and of... And some of both. It, well, yes, but <coughs> no-one's counted them, so your own children would fit into that category. Uh, well, hopefully, lots of people can speak different languages, but the point I'm making is, do we want to live in an integrated no, society? No, no, forgive me. The point you're making is that schools in the East End are full of children who can't speak English. I just want you to... To recognise that's not true, no, what you just said. Come from the home. children who are typified as speaking English yeah. as a second language would include your own daughters. They come... Their mother tongue being German. Homes. They come from homes where English is most definitely not the first language and, in too many cases, is not the language at all. Now, look, you know... But no-one's counted how many people are in the second no, category. No, and it would be a very helpful and useful thing if they did, and perhaps we'd be well, even more surprised and even more shocked. But the or, argument... Or, or, here, or perhaps we'd realise that most bilingual well, children in this country are children like yours. Well, let's turn it around the other way, shall we? Yes, let's. Let's talk about immigration. Let's talk about Europe. Let's talk about the European elections. I am making one very simple point. We cannot have any form of managed migration into Britain and remain a member of the European Union because we have an open door to nearly half a billion people. And the argument, James, I'm putting is this. We'd be far better to have an immigration policy that didn't, as it currently does, discriminate against engineers from India or doctors from New Zealand in favour of anybody, regardless of skill levels or backgrounds, coming from southern and eastern Europe. And that is the great debate. And when Nick Clegg, you know, took me on and I tried to have that debate with him and he was very reluctant on that particular point to engage, Cameron and Miliband run a country mile away from that debate. And that, I think, is at the heart of our relationship with Europe. Indeed. And, I, I mean, if that was the debate that you'd offered to have on this programme, we'd have it now. But what the yeah. caller asked you was, was why so many people think you're racist. Yeah, well, I think, you know, yes, we've had our idiots. And, and, and part of the answer would be, you talk <coughs> about children who can't speak English as a first language without mentioning it includes, well, your, a, it includes your own children. I mean, what is racism? You know, is racism between right. races? I mean, I, I was talking, I was talking well, about... Well, don't I you was know? Talking, I was talking How about, can you say you're not something if you don't know what well, it is? I mean, is, is race about colour? 
Is, 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 is race about race or is it about nationality? You know, I made a comment there that wasn't intended to say any more that I felt uncomfortable about the rate and pace of change and numbers of people. No, you were felt uncomfortable about people speaking foreign languages, yes, despite well, the fact that presumably your own wife does when she phones home to Germany. Yeah, I don't suppose she speaks it on the train, you know. Uh, That's why not? Make. Is she not allowed to? Can't well, she speak German wherever she wants? To. And of what about the line about we're not wanting to live next door to Romanians? It's perfectly acceptable for people not that. to I want to... I was asked, if a group of Romanian men moved in next door to you, would you be concerned? What about if a group of German children children did. What's the difference? Oh, the difference, and you know what the difference no, is. No, I honestly don't. This is, I think, where the well, disconnect well, we is between a, your position and mine. What is want, the difference? We want an immigration policy based on controlling not just quantity, but quality as well. And we have a problem that if, it, and unfortunately, those communist countries, which I've visited, and I've visited the Roma encampments, and I've seen the real poverty that people live in, and we talk about exclusion in society. Go and see since the fall of communism, what has happened to the Roma communities in those countries. They don't get jobs, they get nowhere to live, and, and they have been forced, in many cases, to a life of crime. And what has happened with an open door is it's been an op open invitation for the traffickers. Now, we all know this is going on. Okay. The Metropolitan Police... Tra trafficking is a crime, of course. It, the trafficking is a crime. And trafficked people are victims of <laughs> crime. Yes, and the Metropolitan Police... The Metropolitan Police have produced their crime statistics and they're eye-watering. And I'm saying, let's get a grip on it. I, I know you're saying that about Romanians, but, but why can't you understand how many people feel troubled that you're also talking about them? 32 million people are looking for jobs in Europe and that big clunking fist pointing, saying that they're that coming... That was a provocative poster. They're coming for your job. That frightens people. Well, people who are already here working. Well, sadly, people, people who my children go to school <coughs> with. Their parents are troubled by the idea that they're now being demonised and typified. And you gloss so smoothly well, well, and so slickly over... Demonising Romanians and demonising Germans. I'm not demonising anybody. But you I'm, just I'm, I'm asked you a question about Romanians I'm and you started talking about people traffickers. I'm demonising a political class that has allowed us to have an open door to allow things like this to happen. OK, so when, when I say Romanian and you start talking about people traffickers, why didn't you say people are perfectly entitled to feel uncomfortable about living next door to people traffickers, wherever yeah. they're from. Yeah, no, Why no, do you well, say I, Romanians? I didn't say Romanians. I was, asked, oh. I was asked a question, if a group of Romanian men moved in next to you, would you be concerned? And if you lived in London, I think you would be. Yes. Um, it, it's reported this morning, Nigel, that you pulled out of an interview on London Live because there was no makeup artist. What a load of rubbish. That's what I'm I thought. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm really, that's, you know, that's what I thought I can, you can say. accuse me of many things, but not that. Well, I've tried to, <laughs> and, and um, I, I'm delighted you're so happy. I'm still uh, utterly un persuaded right. as to why you sit on a party with the leader of uh, the Italian Lega Nord, a, a member of the Anders Breivik fan club. I'm completely no. un, 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 un... I do not understand why you use words like Romanian when I describing you who you would and would not want I to live next do. door to. I, I don't understand do. why you're uncomfortable listening to foreign languages when your own wife and children yeah. speak them. And I don't understand why you talk about problems in primary schools that are caused by children like your own. Why don't you? I tell you what, why don't you come and meet UKIP's black and ethnic oh, candidate. Right. Hang on. Some of my best friends. Hang on, hang on. Well, very interesting. Did you see the opinion poll at the weekend that showed amongst the BME community, UKIP is now polling at 16%. We're getting more BME voters than the Conservatives and Lib Dems added up together. So there are a large I, number... I will come with you, and, you know, and you come with me and meet the, 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 the opinion poll also at this weekend <coughs> that found, I think, just over 40% of, of voters who think that your party is racist. Which is... which which And that And, and what, and what that do you think you've done in the last 20 minutes? Percentage. I know we don't have any longer. I was hoping for an hour. But, but what do you think you've done in the last 20 minutes to assuage the fears of those people? Maybe it clear to people that actually controlling the quantity and quality of people that come into your country is a primary duty of government and we cannot do it as members of the European Union. And finally, the uh, question of your expenses and your financial arrangements. I heard, <laughs> I heard you on Radio 4 saying that you'd submit to a full audit. You've, you've, you've reverse ferreted on that well, on the grounds that other MEPs don't. We, so these are the transparency arrangements we that all, all yeah. Labour MEPs sign up for. Yeah. Can you sign up for those today? Uh, yeah, they don't yes? actually. What they do is they have an auditor More than you. make sure they spend the money in accordance with the rules. Yes. There are no expenses. But you say that as if there's something wrong with it. They there have are, an no, auditor no, 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 to make no, sure no. they spend the money in there accordance are, with the rules. Oh, sorry, we have an this agreement in about timing. You've massively... This is... Patrick O'Flynn, yeah. UKIP's no, Director no. of Communications and former, no. former political commentator on the Daily Express. Uh, no. Is this a friend in the media or hang a member on, of the on. political class? There are no expenses. These are allowances, fixed rate allowances, which I've spent in accordance with the rules. So will you go for the audit that all Labour MEPs go for? We will make a decision en masse. Yeah, well, yes or no, Nigel, election, you're in charge. But I, I, I'm very suspicious of the word audit used in that context. Are you? Yes, very. OK. Nigel Farage, all many right. thanks for your time and, and energy Thank this you. afternoon. There's a full list, of course, of all Euro candidates available on the LBC website. Goodbye, Mr O'Flynn. Goodbye, Mr Farage. Many thanks for your time.
It's 11.53. I'm Jay Louise Knight in the LBC Travel Centre and starting to the east of London, the A30.